Okay, now let's talk about a few more important properties of materials. The first is ductility. Now ductility is the amount of plastic deformation at failure. We want to know how much it can stretch before it fails. So something that fails really early, doesn't stretch much, has very low ductility. That'd be like steel. Well, something that stretches a lot would have a high ductility. That'd be more like aluminum. And there's two ways we can specify that, either in our percent elongation. This is percent, so we always times it by 100 at the end. That'll be our final minus our initial over initial, just percent change, or the percent reduction in area. Either one of those can be used to calculate it. There's two other that are important to us. One is resilience, which is simply the amount of energy that is able to be absorbed during elastic deformation. Now, what you might not see here is, um, well, first of all, a little lesson. Energy, one way of measuring it is called force times distance. This is work energy. Remember that our stress and our strain here, they're, fairly, they're proportional to this. Okay, they're proportional to what we have here. And so, in fact, this is also more or less proportional to the amount of energy that it's able to absorb. Now, we know that we always go to the yield point. That's the point where we say, well, that's where we're transitioning from elastic to plastic. But that happens so close to the in the linear region that we can assume that this is more or less a triangle. And so from that, we can get the amount of energy that's able to be absorbed um, by our material before plastic deformation as simply one half our yield stress times the yield strain. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it's very, very close to it. Now, how much, what about if we're talking about energy before failure? That was energy before plastic deformation. What about energy before failure? Well, this is toughness. It's a lot more difficult to calculate um, in the fact that this is a nice curvy line here. But if you needed to, you could always you know, break it up into a bunch of rectangles and kind of do a little integration that way. I'm not going to make you do that in most cases. Um, I'll give you an equation usually. Um, or we can do something a little bit nicer and I'll just ask you, comparing these three, which one's most tough? So what you have to do is you have to approximate the area. So this is like a big rectangle. That's a big area. This is a small rectangle, small area. This is a long, but still very small rectangle. So small area. This one has a large toughness. Aluminum can take a whole lot more energy before failure in many cases. When I say energy, I don't say stress, just energy. While toughness of our you know ceramics or steels um, well it would be a little less than that okay because steel is going to fail earlier than aluminum when it comes to strain it also has a much higher yield stress so eh, you'll you'll gain something there but all in all all we're really seeing here is that this is the amount of energy that that material can absorb before failure that's super important, especially if you take my saw mechanics class later. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.